Hi guys, in this video we will be learning about low and high energy coasts. This will involve understanding the sediment sources in coastal systems and learning about coastal sediment budgets and finishing with an exam style question. So to start off with we're going to look at low energy and high energy coasts and from these two photos you can see that coasts look very different in different places with this photograph here being an example of a low energy coast and this one here being a high energy coast. So now we're going to go and look at the different characteristics of these different types of coasts starting with low energy coasts. So Low energy coasts, as you might tell, have very low energy acting upon them, and this is in the form of low wave energy. So this means that the waves are not very strong. And because of this low wave energy, deposition here is greater than the rate of erosion, and that is why you can see we get all of this sand build up, as you can see in this photograph here. So the common landforms we associate with low energy coasts are beaches, and spits, which we just saw in that photograph. And examples of places where we find low energy coasts are estuaries, and this is where rivers are reaching the sea, inlets and sheltered bays. And then moving on to high energy coasts, this is the complete opposite. And this is where we have high energy waves. So they have a lot of erosional power because they are much stronger. And this is because they tend to be driven by strong and steady prevailing winds. And we learned in the previous video that it's winds that are creating the majority of waves. So where we have strong winds, we often find we have strong waves as well. And this means that at high energy coasts, the rate of erosion is greater than the rate of deposition. And that's why in this photograph, we can see that here we don't have many coasts or beaches where sediment is building up. It's merely these cliffs that are being eroded uh, most of the time and the sediment is being transported away from it by the waves. So the landforms that we associate with high energy coasts tend to be cliffs, wave platforms and headlands. And examples of high energy coasts are those which are surrounding the Atlantic, such as the Cornish coast in England, um, which is where this photograph was taken from, as the Atlantic has very strong wave power due to the winds travelling across it at very high speeds. Now we're going to move on to look at where sediment sources are and where sediment comes from. And this photograph here gives a nice depiction of how Sediment is transported in water, as you can see in this photograph here, we can see sand moving within the water and being deposited and eroded or transported away from different areas. So coastal sediment typically comes from five different places. It can firstly come from streams and rivers. So this happens in estuaries where rivers and streams are reaching the sea and they will deposit a lot of the material they've picked up on their route from inland towards the coast. We also have cliff erosion, as we saw in the last image of high energy cliffs or coasts. When cliffs are eroded, we get sediments from this process. We also have sediment coming from offshore sandbanks. This is where sand is deposited off the coast and it can be brought in by waves towards the coast and we also have sediment coming from biological origins such as shells from animals and creatures that live in coastal and marine environments and also coral fragments when coral has died and this is transported on and becomes part of coastal sediments. And it's also important to understand what a sediment cell is and we can think of a sediment cell as a distinct area of coastline such as a cove or could be on a much larger scale and these areas of coastline are separated from other areas by well-defined boundaries such as pieces of headland that stick out into the sea and this separates some areas of coast from other areas and within these areas of coastline we get sediment cells and this is where sediment is being only transferred, being either deposited or eroded within these specific areas. 
So they can be thought of as closed systems, but only in theory. And by being a closed system, this means that the sediment is staying within the cell. It's not being transported out of it. But this is only in theory because in reality, really small things like silts and clay particles can actually be transported over long distance by using very low energy. So these really small particles can actually be transported out and into the sediment cell. But it's usually the larger sediments we're talking about, such as sand, which remain within the cell. And as I mentioned before, these sediment cells can vary in size from merely a cove on a coastland, or it could be an entire stretch of coast. And because these are closed systems, we find that the inputs and outputs into our sediment cells are balanced. So to give you an idea of what a sediment cell is, taking this area of coast around the bottom of Wales and around the Cornwall, this whole area here between these two pieces of headland is a sediment cell and sediment is merely staying and being transported in and around this specific area and that's because it's cut off by these two pieces of headland and this is the same for areas such as around this part of the coast so we get sediment cells in these sorts of areas and they can be very small sediment cells or they can be as large as this example here and because these are closed systems, we find that sand is not being transported out of or into these closed specific areas. And that's exactly what a sediment cell is. It's an area of closed off transportation of sediments. So to finish off, we're going to look at coastal sediment budgets. And coastal sediment budgets can be thought of like a bank account. And they're like the balance between sediment addition and sediment removal. And... These are for the individual sediment cells that we just looked at. So they measure the balance between the addition and removal of sediment. And this requires the identification of sources of sediment and also sinks of sediment. And when the sediment budget is in balance, the beach or the coast stays the same. It doesn't vary in size. However, if the removal is greater than the addition of sediment, we will find that the coast begins to recede and vice versa if addition is greater than removal the coast will advance and this means the coastline will grow because more is being deposited than is being removed away and these are actually very difficult models to represent and these models are very complex so we don't need to know about them in detail because they are very complex, but it's good to be able to understand exactly what a coastal sediment budget is. And it's merely all you need to know is that it's the balance between sediment addition and removal for a sediment cell. So now we're going to look at an exam style question. And this is a four mark question, which asks us to explain the concept of a sediment cell. And because it's four marks, we just need to give it four individual points about the concept of what a sediment cell is, which we looked at earlier on in this video. So you can use any fact you want about a sediment cell, as long as it's relevant to the concept and what the question is asking, but we just need four individual points. So my first point is that a sediment cell is a closed system, usually bounded by headlands. So this gives a nice overall image of what a sediment cell is. It's a closed system and it's good to indicate the bit about extra information about that it's divided or bounded by headlands. Then I've gone on to say that within a cell there is erosion, transport and deposition. These are the processes of our sediment cell so it's good to refer to processes because that is what the cell is made up of and these occur within a long-term cycle. Then my third point, I've said that the only inputs into the cell come from erosion of the land or seabed and this is because as we learned earlier that we don't have transport of sediment between sediment cells, so the sediment only is able to come from within the cell. And then that is my final point, which follows on from the previous point, that there is little or no movement of sediment between cells. So that is four individual points to answer our question. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, 
Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-Level Geography a walk in the park.